Namaste. In today's class, we will have a look at chromosomal and genetic disorders and inbreeding. Now, chromosome as we have seen in one of the lectures before, chromosome. So, chroma is color and soma is body. So, in, our, in any of our cells, we have a nucleus and inside this nucleus, we have these fragments that contain all our genetic information and these are known as chromosomes. Now, chromosomal disorders are defined like this. A chromosome disorder is a missing extra or irregular portion of chromosomal DNA caused by an atypical number of chromosomes or a structural abnormality in one or more chromosomes. So, what do we see here? Either there is some part that is missing, some part that is extra or some part that is irregular in the chromosomal DNA and this can be caused because of atypical number of chromosomes that is an incorrect number of chromosomes or a structural abnormality in one or more chromosomes. So, what all things can we see here? We can observe things like numerical disorders. So, um, all of our chromosomes are there in pairs. So, for instance, if we talk about chromosome number 18, there would be one chromosome 18 that comes from the father and one chromosome 18 that comes from the mother. And this phenomenon is known as bisomy. So, bi is 2 and soma is body. So, there are two bodies of every chromosome that are present in the cell. Now, numerical disorders include monosomy. So, mono is 1, somy is body. So, there is only one chromosome in place of a pair of chromosomes. Then we can have trisomy. So, in place of two chromosomes, we can have three chromosomes. Tetrasomy, in which in place of two chromosomes, we can have four chromosomes and so on. So, these are, are known as numerical disorders. We even have a situation that is known as nullsomy. So, nullsomy would mean that in place of a pair of chromosomes, you do not have any chromosome that belongs to that pair. So, for instance, chromosome number 18 could be missing from any cell or an organism. So, these are numerical disorders. Next, we have structural abnormalities. Structural abnormalities include deletion, duplication, translocation and inversion. So, deletion means that a part of a chromosome is missing. So, for instance, if this is your chromosome, then it is possible that this portion is missing and so your chromosome will become shortened. So, this portion is missing and then it just has the other end. So, it has shortened up. So, this is a deletion, a part of a chromosome that is missing. Next, we have duplication, a part of a chromosome in two or multiple copies. So, let us represent this with different colors. So, let us call this as the red region, this is the blue region and say this is the yellow region. Now, in the first case, what we had was that we had the red region and the yellow region and the blue region was missing. So, this is a deletion. Now, in the case of duplication, what we can have is that we have this chromosome, the red region is there, then we have a blue region that comes that has duplicated. So, it has increased in its length and then we have the yellow region. So, in this case, we will see that this is the red region, then we have one blue region and then we have another blue region and then we have the yellow region. So, this would be known as duplication because this region of the chromosome is present in two copies. Now, in place of two copies, we can have even multiple copies. Next is translocation. So, translocation means that a part of a chromosome gets shifted to another chromosome. So, in that case, let us take another chromosome. And in this chromosome, we have say the purple color followed by a light green color uh, followed by say a pink color. So, now in the case of a translocation, we could have a situation in which say this portion gets translocated, this portion is getting translocated. So, that would result in a situation in which the first chromosome and 
we have the second chromosome. So, the first one now has the purple region on the top followed by the light green region followed by the yellow region because these two portions got translocated from one to the other and so the second one would have the red region followed by the blue region and then followed by the pink region. So, this thing is known as a translocation. So, a part of a chromosome has shifted to another chromosome and the fourth situation is an inversion. So, in the case of an inversion, so suppose we are talking about this chromosome only. So, in the case of inversion it is possible that these two portions get interchanged. So, in this situation what we will have is that in this chromosome we have the top is the red region followed by the yellow region followed by the blue region. So, what has happened in this case is that this portion of this chromosome it has turned upside down. Now, it is not necessary that this should only occur at the end of the chromosome, but it can occur somewhere in between as well. So, for instance in the red portion we can have a situation that this portion gets upside down. So, such a situation will be known as an inversion. Now, why are all of these important? Now, chromosomes contain DNA that has all the genes. Now, if there is a situation in which there is a deletion of a part of a chromosome, then it is possible that some genes or maybe a single gene or a set of genes, they are deleted along with this part of the chromosome. So, in that case any of the functions that were being done by that gene will now no longer be in the organism. So, it is possible that there would be some proteins that are now completely missing from the animal. So, that might lead to a disease or that might even lead to a death. Duplication, a part of a chromosome is in two or multiple copies. So, if there was a gene that was performing a function, so there was a gene that was producing some protein. So, we had a gene that was producing protein and let us say that it was producing x amount of protein let us call it x milligrams of protein. Now, if we have two times of this gene, then it may produce two times of the protein. So, we get a 2 x milligram of protein. It is also possible that if we have more and more copies of the gene in the chromosomes, then it is possible that our proteins uh, that had to be present at say this level are now present at this level. So, now that would also lead to some amount of abnormality in the body that would also lead to some amount of disease in the body. Next is translocation. So, a part of a chromosome has shifted to another chromosome. So, translocation and inversion. Now, in both of these situations, your genes are there in the chromosome, whether in that particular chromosome or in some other chromosome. But then why are these important? Because these may break some of the genes. So, for instance, if you had this DNA and this DNA, you had this portion as say a gene let us call it gene x. Now, when this portion is getting inverted then it is possible that your inversion occurs at this region. So, in the resulting chromosome you will have a situation in which your half of the gene is here then this portion was inverted. So, now when that inversion happens, so this portion gets to this side and this portion gets to this side. So, in that situation you will have that this portion has now turned into this side and is now here. Now, what we are seeing here is that we have a fragment of gene x here and we have a fragment of gene x here. Now, in the earlier situation when you had the complete gene x, this was producing some protein, but now you have got two different fragments of gene x. So, probably your protein is no longer being produced or it is also possible that in these situations you may have so for instance this portion on the right it was having say some other gene. So, now this was say gene y. Now, when this inversion occurs, so now you have a situation in which you have these two fragments here and these two fragments here. So, now in place of your gene x you have another portion of information let us call it gene x prime and let us call this one as gene y prime. 
Now, there could be situations in which your gene X prime or gene Y prime are just non functional. So, they are not producing anything or they are producing something that has minor amount of aberration, but then because this is coding for an entirely new sort of a protein, it is also possible that it produces some protein that is completely harmful to, to the body. So, probably it produces a protein that uh, that goes and attaches itself to an enzyme and it stops the functioning of that enzyme. So, in those situations uh, the life of the animal would become much more critical. So, what are the impacts of these chromosomal abnormalities? They depend on which genes are being impacted, the level to which they are being impacted and also any new genes that get created in this manner. So, the impacts may vary, but then these are the basic chromosomal disorders that would lead to such an impact. Next we have genetic disorders. Now, a genetic problem that is caused by an abnormality or abnormalities in the genome. So, it is very similar to the chromosomal disorders, but here we are looking at the genetic level. So, now the kinds of genetic in disorders could include a gene that does not work say due to deletion or inactivation. Now, deletion is something that we have already seen. So, essentially you had a gene X here. Now, if this portion say got deleted, so now you would have a chromosome that does not have any gene X. So, that is deletion, but then what is inactivation? So, if you consider any gene, so this is your gene X that is producing a protein X. Now, the amount of protein that needs to be produced in the body has to be very carefully regulated. So, for instance, if there is any enzyme that is being produced, if there is no enzyme or very little amount of enzyme, then the body will not be able to function properly. But at the same time, if this enzyme is present in a very large amount, then too it will not be able to function properly. Now, to control that, there are a number of activating and deactivating regions in the whole of the genome. So, for instance, if you have this gene and if you have sequences before it that say have acetylation. So, acetylation would mean that there are acetyl groups that get attached here. So, that would lead to an activation of this gene. On the other hand, if there are some groups that get methylated. So, methylation is when you have your CH3 uh, group that gets attached here. So, in that case your gene will become inactivated. So, methylation leads to inactivation. and acetylation leads to activation of the gene. So, if this gene is activated, it will produce protein X. If this gene is inactivated, it will not produce protein X. Now, when your chromosomal abnormalities are leading to a situation in which your gene was not deleted, but it gets inactivated. So, what is happening in this case is that suppose in our previous example, we had uh, this gene X that was inactivated and your gene Y that was having an activation area here. Now, once you have this translocation, so what we will observe is that this region, the purple region now comes to this side, because this has shifted to this side. Now, in that case and here your inactivation region remains as such because this is outside the translocation region. Now, in this case what is happening is that this gene X that was earlier inactivated. Now, this gene X prime also happens to be an inactivated gene, but then your gene Y that was activated now does not have any of these activation sequences. So, your, your gene Y prime even if it is able to code for a correct protein it will be inactivated in this case because it does not have the activation sequences before it. So, it is a gene that does not work. Similarly, you can have a gene that works extra because that is present in multiple copies or there is an, act, an extra activation sequence that is present because of the genetic disorder. Or you can have a situation in which there is a gene that does different work say due to a mutation that changes the structure of the protein made. So, in this example, we had seen that our, our gene Y had shifted had converted into gene Y prime. So, now this would be having 
a very different function and a very different sequence. But then it is also possible that if you have a gene, then there are some regions that get changed and in that case this would also lead to a mutation. So, your kinds of genetic disorders include a gene that is not working, a gene that is doing an extra work or a gene that is doing a different work making a very different protein. Now, let us have a look at inbreeding. Inbreeding refers to the mating of individuals that are genetically related. So, essentially it means mating of individuals say that are brothers and sisters or say parents and children. So, that would be called as an as a very extreme level of inbreeding. Now, it increases homozygosity causing expression of recessive traits and reduces variations between individuals in the population. Why? Because both of these individuals were genetically related. So, it there is a high possibility that both of them are having the same genes in a number of locations. Now, when both of these uh, individuals mate together, then there is a high possibility that any of the recessive traits start showing themselves. So, as we had seen in our previous class, if you have a situation in which you have say T A, T B and C, T C and T D. If these are four different alleles and you have these two individuals, then uh, the progeny would be T A, T C, uh, T A, T D, T B, T C and T B, T D. So, there would be these four different kinds of individuals, because both of these individuals the parents are not related. So, they are having very different alleles amongst themselves. But then if both of these are related, then you can have a situation in which you have T A T B crossed with T A T B. Now, what would that result in? That result in T A T A, T A T B, T A T B and T B T B. So, these are the four individuals that are formed when both of your parents are genetically related. So, they are having the same alleles on uh, this particular gene. Now, if we look at the results, we have the situation T A T A and T B T B. So, these progeny, so now in the previous situation we did not have any gene that was homozygous. So, we did not have a situation with T A T A or T B T B or T C T C or T D T D. But in this situation in uh, when our, our parents are genetically related, we have a situation in which the offspring is T A T A or the offspring is T B T B. Now, why is it important? This is important because say your T A or T B was a recessive allele. So, in this case the phenotype will be that of T C, in this case the phenotype will that be of T D, in this case your phenotype is T C and here your phenotype is T D. And if this if these alleles are coding for say some recessive disorder. So, let us say that only your T A was a recessive gene here. So, in this situation these two individuals will be expressing the phenotype of T B. So, here we are saying that T A is recessive. So, these two individuals are, are showing the phenotype of T B because they are heterozygous. This one is homozygous, but it is still showing the phenotype of T B. But what happens in this case is that this individual has now started showing up the phenotypes that was coded by the T A gene or, or the T A allele. So, what is happening in this case is that we are seeing an expression of a recessive trait that was not seen before. Now, these recessive traits might be coding for some diseases. Now, this also reduces variations between the individuals in the population, because what we are seeing here is that in our second scenario, in the second scenario, we saw that both of these individuals were the same and if we look at their progeny, so this one is say coding for a recessive disorder, so this dies off. So, now in the second generation also we are seeing the same, same alleles in the same order that are seen in the next generation. And if this thing continues, then the amount of variation between the individuals will go on reducing with every generation. Now, in some organisms inbreeding is seen naturally. So, in the case of uh, Drosophila melanogaster or banded mongoose, the animals have a tendency to prefer mating with one of their relatives. But then in the case of some other animal populations, they are forced into inbreeding when the population is so small or isolated 
that most of the individuals are already genetically related. So, there is not much of a mating choice available for those animals. So, what are the impacts of inbreeding? Suppose you have a very small population, most of the individuals are already genetically related. So, there is inbreeding. So, why should we be concerned about inbreeding? So, there are three kinds of, of uh, changes that this can bring about. You can have same genes, you can have little variety and you can have fixed alleles. So, we will have a look at the impacts here. So, what we are observing is that there are a group of animals in which most of the animals have the same genes. So, essentially wo all the animals are very similar to being clones of each other. So, what happens is that if one animal gets a disease, the, the other animal can also get that disease very fast, because the pathogen that was able to infect one organism will be very easily able to infect another organism, because the immune response that is being set up by both of these individuals are one and the same. Also, if there is a little variety and also there is there are fixed alleles. So, fixed alleles is a situation in which now coming back to our example, here we were observing situations in which all these you have four different alleles in the population. But then what happens if all your organisms are say TATA crossed with TATA. So, in this situation all the progeny that are formed will be TATA only. So, in this situation we will say that our allele T a has become fixed in the population. There is no way that we can have another allele in this population till we get a mutation or till we get some other population from outside. So, this, these are known as fixed alleles. So, the impacts are seen in a number of ways such as juvenile mortality. So, this is one paper in which they studied uh, cheetahs. Uh, with their stud book. So, stud book is a collection of the information of their uh, parents and their children. So, if we look at unrelated populations, we had an, an infant mortality of 26.3 percent, but if we look at related organisms, we had an infant mortality of 44.2 percent. So, the amount of infant mortality goes up. Now, why does this go up? Because there could be a number of recessive diseases that are now showing up even in the embryonic stage. And so, this is one defense mechanism that nature has put in that if there is a fetus that is having a number of diseases, then it automatically aborts itself. Or even if this, this fetus is able to come up uh, to the uh, stage where it is born, then because most of these disorders will start showing up at the early age. So, we will see a huge amount of infant mortality. So, there will be more number of stillbirths and also more number of infant mortality. Now, a case study here is the case study of Isle Royal wolves. Now, Isle Royal is an island uh, in the United States and this island is surrounded by water on all sides and so it is completely cut off from any other landmass. The only way in which it gets connected to the land masses is in the case of winter seasons where an ice bridge forms that connects it to the mainland. Now, in the 19th century, we had a situation in which some moose came into this island and moose are very similar to our deers, they are large sized animals and they are herbivores. So, because there were no predators on this island, so the moose population started increasing. Then in the early 1900s, we had some wolves that came into this island when another ice bridge formed. So, if you look at this blue colored chart, this blue color tells us the number of wolves and it goes from 0 to 50. The yellow colored chart tells us the number of moose and it goes from 0 to 2500. So, we have a very large number of herbivores and a very less number of predators in on this island. But if you look at these predators, these wolves, so because a very small population came into this island and this small population was breeding amongst itself, so we started seeing quite a lot of inbreeding in this system. So, what happened was that we had this moose population and then we had this wolf population. Now, wolf population would, would decline in, in certain times because there is a severe winter and that could lead to a death of wolves and also that of the moose. Now, 
if you look at the wolf chart so this wolf densities this they kept on increasing and by 1980 we had wolves that had, that had reached the highest density that is found in nature but then in 1981 there was a fisherman that visited this island together with his dog and that dog had canine parvovirus now this parvovirus was spread from that dog into the wolves and we can see that their population that had reached to this height now suddenly decimated now why was this decimation possible because most of these wolves were closely related to each other and so if one wolf got infected it there was a very high chance that the other wolves will also get infected now after this decimation they again started to increase their population but then this population was kept at a very low pace because of huge amount of inbreeding depression so essentially here we had very less number of wolves that had come inside and at this point we had another bottleneck in which most of individuals died off and so a very less number of individuals were left so any wolves from this point onwards would be having a very high level of inbreeding depression now when the wolf population is less the moose population st starts to increase and then there was a severe winter in 1996 in which we had a severe decimation in the moose population now in 1997 we had one individual that came in and that was known as the old grey guy so this individual was able to to provide some amount of genetic rescue into the inbred wolves and so their population increased again so from this level it reached to this level then this individual also died off and then we had a, these wolves that were extremely closely related to each other so this is a natural case study that, ha that has come up now if we observe these isle royal wolves what sorts of genetic abnormalities do we observe in these so one is a very high level of stillbirths now this stillbirth occurs because most of the, the fetuses have some amount of recessive disorders some diseases and so nature expels them out nature aborts them so that these are not born with these diseases now even in the case of the adult wolves so these are the wolves that were able to be born and then these reach to their maturity we can observe genetic disorders such as this opaque eye now if there is a wolf whose eye is opaque then it would not be able to hunt efficiently and in this particular wolf population we are observing a number of wolves that are having opaque eyes which is another genetic disorder next we are observing disorders even in their skeletal systems so these are the last three wolves that remain in the system and both of these are extremely closely related and this is the offspring and if you see the offspring then there is a hunchback in this wolf and this wolf is not able to hunt properly it is not even able to walk properly so this is one case study now the other kinds of abnormalities that we have observed in closely inbred populations are things such as uh, changes in the sperms so if we consider a sperm we would have a, a head region and a long flagellum so this is the structure of a sperm but if we look at these cheetah sperms which are very highly inbred we see abnormalities such as this so this is a microcephalic sperm in which the head region is very small here we have a sperm that has got two heads here we have a sperm that has got two tails so we are observing genetic uh, or structural abnormalities in a number of cheetahs that are closely inbred other kinds of abnormalities that we observe so this is in the case of lion sperms uh, because these animals so cheetahs and lions were heavily hunted in the past so most of the animals that are left out now are closely related so in the case of lion sperms as well we are seeing things like macrocephaly that is large size head microcephaly that is small sized head in the sperm biflagellate bicephalic and then we have abnormal acrosomes abnormal midpiece tightly coiled flagellum which is not allowing these sperms to move detached head so your head is completely separated from the flagellum bent midpiece so in all the portions of the sperm we are now observing abnormalities so now this is also a result of the genetic uh, disorders that are being brought about by inbreeding another case study is that of the spread of diseases so in may 1982 
अ क्लिनिकली हेल्दी एट ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल चीता इन द चीता ब्रीडिंग प्रोग्राम एट वाइल्ड लाइफ सफारी ओरिगॉन इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स डेवलप्ड जॉन्डिस फीवर एंड डायरिया एंड बिकॉज इट वॉज देयर इन अ चीता ब्रीडिंग प्रोग्राम फैसिलिटी सो इट वॉज ट्रीटेड एग्रेसिवली सो इवन विथ एग्रेसिव थेरापी इंक्लूडिंग डायूरेटिक्स एंटीबायोटिक्स वाइटामिन स्टेरॉइड्स एंड फोर्स फीडिंग द एनिमल डाइड इन अ वीक सो वी हैड अ हेल्दी लुकिंग चीता that suddenly developed jaundice fever and diarrhea and then died in a week the diagnosis was feline infectious peritonitis caused by a corona virus now in so this was in may 1982 and this is a viral disease so now in by january 1983 all the cheetahs at the facility had developed antibodies and during the year over 90% showed sign of the disease and 18 animals died so when we say that there is an animal that is showing that has developed antibodies it means that the virus has infected that animal because of which the immune system is now putting up a response to the virus so this response is in the form of antibodies so in say around 7 months we saw that all the cheetahs in the facility had been infected by the virus and in the year over 90% of these started showing signs of the disease and 18 animals died out so that is a very high level of mortality now if we have a high level of mortality there could be a number of reasons the most common reason is that we have a virus that is extremely virulent and that has a very high level of lethality so this is something that we had discussed before whenever we are talking about a pathogen we are looking at its virulence we are looking at its lethality now in this situation we could have a virus that had a very high level of virulence a very high level of infectivity so infectivity would mean that it it infects all the other animals virulence means that it shows signs of a, a disease that has a, a level of severity and then it also has a very high level of lethality because of which a number of animals have died out but if you look at some other evidences from this area then because this was already a facility so the scientists took out fluid and tissue samples from the diseased animals and then injected them into kittens experimentally so if this virus was a virus that had a very high level of infectivity virulence and lethality then the kittens would also have died because they are also closely related to the cheetahs they belong to the same feline family but in this case the, uh, these kittens did not produce did not get the disease so uh, this virus was not able to infect these kittens and when we are talking about kittens they already have a very small age so they are extremely young and we the scientists used kittens because very young animals and very old animals have higher susceptibility to be infected by the disease but still it did not produce disease in the kittens also 10 african lions in the same facility did not develop signs of the disease so lions are also members of the cat family and they were also in the same facility but they also did not develop any signs of the disease so then it was figured out that the cheetahs that were there in the facility did not have a significant variation in their major histocompatibility complex genetic makeup and all showed the same response to the virus the major histocompatibility complex is a set of cell surface proteins that recognize foreign molecules and with little variation in the mhc genetic makeup the cheetah's immune system could not recognize many pathogens as foreign molecules so what was happening in this case is that when you have a virus inside the body you have an immune response that or let us call it killed virus and so the disease gets treated by itself now when we talk about the immune response then this response could be against any new organism that has come into the body so whenever we are talking about any immune response this has to differentiate between self versus foreign because if we have this immune response against our own cells then it would lead to a condition that is known as autoimmune disorder so essentially our immune response will start killing our own cells now to prevent that this immune response has a mechanism of differentiating between self molecules and the foreign molecules or the foreign antigens so a virus needs to be identified as a foreign antigen now this identification occurs with the help of certain cell surface proteins 
Now these proteins are able to recognize a virus as foreign antigen. But if uh, in case of a very low level of variation in the major histocompatibility complex, the number of cell surface proteins that are available, their variety is very less. So, they are not able to recognize this virus either as a self or as a foreign. So, basically in those situations, the immune response is not shown up by the animal. So, in this lecture, we looked at chromosomal disorders, genetic disorders and inbreeding. And inbreeding is especially important in today's scenario because we for a number of species, we have a very few number of individuals left. Now, if we go for a very massive, a, a very aggressive amount of breeding program, then it is possible that we might increase the number of animals, but then in that situation, all of these animals will be very closely related and will also be showing a number of recessive disorders. And when these animals have recessive dos disorders that, uh, that's, that thwarts their functioning such as in the case of the wolves with opaque eyes or with stillbirth. But even when these animals are closely related and if we are able to remove all those animals that were having any of the recessive disorders, even then because all these animals were, uh, will be nearly clones of each other, we will observe a very high level of mortality if there is any infection in this population. So, these factors become extremely important in the conservation of wildlife. So, that is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Jai Hind.